Hey guys, Mike Perlman here for Techno Buffalo. Adriana Lee from Techno Buffalo. Adriana, where are we right now? We are in iRobot. They actually agreed to let us not just take a tour, but also drive around these little bad boys. What do you say, Mike? You ready? Let's not wait any longer. Let's go drive a pack bot. Oh, yeah. I'm here with Tim, who's the president of the G uh, GNI division. Is that correct? That's correct. And uh, he's going to give us a little rundown of what these folks are into on the military side of the operations here at iRobot. All of our uh, robot systems are controlled primarily with game style controllers, with what we call an operator control unit, an OCU, essentially a hardened dose, uh, hardened laptop. Unlike myself, everybody who comes into the Navy, all the kids who come into the Navy or to the Army generally have thousands of hours of operation time on a, on a game style controller and can pick up the operations of these things very easily. Very easy to understand displays and scripts. We give them uh, an indication of the robot so you can see the orientation of the robot, what cameras are actually on. Kids, do you hear me? Like, if you're logging all those hours on your Xbox, um, you could already be training for a career as a, as a driver of robots. We'll, uh, we'll start off with the, the venerable Packbot, the senior member of our stable, about a 60-pound robot. Uh, we like to call it a, a multi-mission robot. This had its origins uh, back in 2001 and 9-11. Uh, we were in the caves in Afghanistan in the 2002-2003 time frame. So, Adriana, the real question is, can you get the robot to fetch your purse for you? Robot for placement. The next time I go shopping, I'm not asking my husband to hold my purse anymore. I'm just going to bring this guy with me. Thank you. Uh, we moved over into these platforms, which we call Sub V, affectionately. The uh, small unmanned ground vehicle. It's uh, been deployed to theater, currently working in Afghanistan now uh, with two brigade combat teams. So you've got night vision capability, night vision camera, a laser rangefinder, two way audio. So this Actually, in the backpack is the module for the controller. Yes. Can I play Super Mario Brothers with this? Um, probably not. Okay. Oh my gosh, there's a monitor in my right eye right now. Are you from the future? That's really cool. I am. I'll be back. Oh, it's just like Xbox. Mm -hmm. Woo! Oh my gosh, that's really, really fast. How, how uh, fast can these go miles per hour? About six. Six miles an hour? Uh oh. Well, he's not happy. I just tried to soak it. He's doing the shot shot. Probably not the most stable drive for this one. Yeah, you're right. Oh, oh, oh! Our largest and newest robot, the Warrior. Uh, this is a 350 pound robot. It has a uh, very substantial arm. We like to call it two robots. You can actually unbolt this arm and it becomes a robotic arm. You could belt it to the back of a truck or a vehicle. And so we sent these to, to Fukushima. So they had used that to pick up debris, um, to they actually fashioned a vacuum cleaner, an industrial vacuum cleaner that was able to vacuum up radioactive debris and reduce the radiation levels to allow uh, uh, longer personnel exposures. In there. I heard a little something about uh, a unit that can actually be taken and thrown into a building. So let's go take a look at the first look. All right. This is uh, just got back from Afghanistan. As you said, this uh, has capability to withstand a 15 foot draw, uh, drop onto concrete. It's intended to be rugged. It's intended to be lightweight. Remember we talked about having to carry uh, packs, uh, heavy packs over long territories and, and uphills. So this weighs five pounds. It's, I won't say indestructible, but very rugged. The game style controller is incorporated in, in the controller itself. Uh, so all the functionality that I would have with a normal game style controller is here, as well, as well as a display. A great tool that a soldier can use to throw in an unknown zone to determine whether there's a hostile threat in there, but as importantly, whether it's a hostile threat. Well, how much uh, is something like this, like what does it cost to produce? Uh, it's uh, about uh, twelve to fifteen thousand dollars. Twelve to fifteen thousand? Yeah, depending on what you, you get out to it. And, and how about Big Brother over there? <laughs> That's uh, three to four hundred thousand, depending on what uh, what accessories you put on. So. It's, yeah, just wrap it up. I'll take one to go. That's amazing. 